Hello and welcome to the Indian Writers Forum. Uh, today we have uh, Shudeshna Banerjee and Shomik Mondavadhyay. Uh, and we will be discussing a very fascinating publishing project that they have been working on for several years now called Thema. Whenever I go to the Kolkata Book Fair, Thema is one of those places I always look forward to every year. So thank you very much, both of you. Uh, could you first briefly begin with uh, uh, the basics? How did it begin? And when did it begin? Actually, uh, as you probably know that uh, I had entered publishing in uh, 1973, to be very precise, and uh, had my training and experience at uh, OUP as written editor. There were several uh, highlights in that stage. Two of them proved to be very uh, useful to me, and I could build upon them later when I left OUP. And try to create an independent space for people like me. Uh, one was, of course, my work with Marshweta Devi. Mm -hmm. Marshweta Devi was commissioned by OUP at that point of time to do a whole series of books to teach uh, students in English medium schools in Eastern India the Bengali language. So for me also, it was a great learning experience working with language. At another level, I inherited from one of my predecessors in OUP, my friend Girish Kanand, who had been a branch manager of the Madras branch and who had just left when I joined OUP as regional editor in Calcutta. And Girish had started a series called New Drama in India. Even the phrase New Drama in India becomes institutionalized and becomes a kind of an academic label for the first time with this OUP series, which started with Girish's own Tughlaq in his translation. And after he left, this is a series which I inherited because I came in with some amount of theater expertise into OUP. And the second book that I published was Eva Mindrajit, in Girish's translation by Badal Sarkar. And by then I had come to know, I, I, I had friends in the theatre community, and I asked Satyadev Dubey to write the introduction to this book. And I carried on with that. So these were two very major things that I was handling at the OUP level. So when I left OUP, I didn't have any very definite plans at that point of time. But then slowly we came to start the sequel books with a friend of mine, Naveen Kishore. And I took over that series of the new drama in India, renamed it, rechristened it as New Indian Playwrights and carried on with that series. And then when I left the Seekal, I started Thema with a number of friends. The focus areas that we initially chose uh, included and one of my major focus areas is a series of books on the actresses of Bengali theatre. Mm. And it was a point of time when I was, when we were starting at Thema, when this whole Binodini myth mm. had come into place, being done in plays, people working out of her autobiography, uh, going into the Jatra, all over the place. And I found from my <clears throat> close work with and study of Bengali theatre and its women actresses that a lot of uh, misconceptions, misreadings were creeping into the narrative of the actress in Bengal. So one of the ideas was to set it right and let the actresses have their voices. And a series of books where Shobha Sen contributes a volume in which she talks about the actresses in the professional theatre who had been her earlier forebears, predecessors, her interactions with them, her work with the IPT and the IPT actresses, and her work post-IPT. I did a long interview-based thing with Ketaki Datta who carried on the tradition of the old professional commercial theatre, the tradition of Vinodini, 
into our times and gave it a whole different orientation and lived the life of the actress marginalized, the actress fighting for her own space in theatre. And all that struggle came through in a very, very different manner from the more officialized, sanitized narrative of Pinodini. So this became one of our areas. We also went into different voices, Dalit literature, mm. translations from the works of the leftist progressive writers whose works had been marginalized, writers like Somin Chanda, who was killed by the fascist goons in 1943 at the beginning of the anti-fascist cultural movement in Bengal, in Dhaka. We published his stories in translation. We published the stories of Samarish Bosch in translation for the first time. We translated the works of Manik Bondopadhyay. So that became a translation project. So we went on simultaneously publishing in Bangla and English. And it has been a, it's a very, very small group. Uh, Sudeshna has been a very close collaborator. And we have other, other colleagues and collaborators working on this project all through. So uh, that's how Thema has gone on and that's how Thema started, that it's, I would like it to extend further and with uh, Sudeshna playing a, an excellent role in editing and, and she has a great sense of design and a lot of that, that gets reflected in the Absolutely. present designs of our books. Sudeshna, could you tell us something about your experience as someone who's worked with other publishing houses as well? A small little addition to what uh, Shomikda said. Uh, which is um, among all his friends uh, who got together and started Thema. One is, I mean, she used to be my teacher in college, um, Kollani Ghosh. In fact, it is in her house that we use a part of the house as our office. Now, I came into Thema when I was in my second year in college, undergrad. And at that point of time, Thima was putting together this fascinating book called uh, Thor Bori Khara. I don't know whether you've seen the book. This was uh, a book written by a person called Kollani Dotto, a fascinating person really. Um, used to be a professor of Sanskrit but with a very, very uh, wide, rich range of interests and reading, a scholar truly, in the truest sense of the term. And she was writing about the, the turn of the century society from the perspective of women, ordinary women, who uh, didn't really go out so much, homebound, but they had a very interesting perspective on life, on the daily mundaneness of life. Mm -hmm. But a lot of social history coming into that and she had a fascinating style. Thorbori Khara was the, was the book where I started my internship with Thima and I was the copy holder, quote unquote. Mm -hmm. Somebody would be looking at the proofs, Shomikda, I would be holding the copy. So, meticulous checking happening. That, that was my entry. In 99, uh, Koruna Bandhupadhyay's, some of her writings, Koruna Bandhupadhyay is the Sharbojaya of Pothir Panchali and Aparajito. Incidentally, happens to be Shomikda's eldest sister in law, Bodhi. Now, Koruna Bandhupadhyay's writings were collated into a book called Sharvojaya. And she was still there and uh, though had become very frail, uh, she was uh, suffering a lot, but awfully thrilled that uh, finally, because she never thought that 
her writings would ever get into a book format. And uh, recently, uh, only in this year's book fair, we have been able to bring out a volume of um, all her correspondence plus uh, her book reviews. And uh, in those letters, uh, primarily to her daughter and to some, some other uh, members of her family as well, but in one such letter, she's thrilled to, to no bits that, uh, you know, uh, Chutka has uh, brought out my book. Not only my writings in Bangla, but also my writings in English in a book called An Actress in Her Time. It was Shomikda's idea that since we are documenting on one level a, a, a social history of theatre, a social history of cinema, we ought to have excellently produced black and white stills and we have kept that on um, even in this latest um, edition that I was talking to you about about Koruna Bandhupadhyay's letters. At Thima at least we have had this uh, understanding among all of us that we won't cringe on as far as production values are concerned and Yes, production costs are going up, but we tend to stick to certain. Like thing. let the book evolve its own let form the, and let, not yeah. impose a form. Not, on the not book. impose a restriction, no. And there is another list that at Thema we have been uh, able to develop over the years is the Thema music list. And there is another thing that Shomikda feels very strongly as a publisher that whenever we are reprinting a book, say whenever a book has run, run out its first print run and we are um, reprinting it, we just don't reprint. We wait until we get substantial material, then we go into an edition. We would like a book to grow all through yeah. in its first incarnation in the first edition, even after and try to address the queries of the readers, the new issues that come out of the book. If you could feed these, if you could address these in the next edition with additional inputs at different levels. So allowing a book to grow, a book should have its own life in the making and even after its first appearance or incarnation. For me, a book is a book that is alive, a growing life. A book that is design and text completely integrated, one growing out of the other, growing into the other continuously. So a book is not a merely a reading experience, it is a more perceiving experience. This is slightly tricky, but I'll try to place this. Your uh, motto is publishing for change. Yes. There are publishers in India and elsewhere who would also call themselves, say, alternative publishers or not, uh, or, or at least not identify themselves with mainstream publishers. But I feel that the, uh, the commitment to, of Thema is not just in being alternative, but the commitment to change, I think, is, is, is more... Uh, inspiring for as a reader what would you find in the publishing industry which makes it a viable process in this change that you're talking about what what change is this uh, there are two points to it it's a very interesting question uh, even we talk of change we are also trying to ra rather than motivating sparking off change that's too ambitious. A book can't do that all by itself. But more important for us is to watch, follow, pursue, study the changes that are happening all around us and respond to the changes. Choose directions in the change that I'd like to further support, strengthen other changes that I would resist through the books that we publish, the way we design, the way we present them, the way we project them. So we often land up with books which are not safe sellers at that point of time. 
because it's a direction that is not a mainstream direction and that is not a very uh, active direction right at the moment but a direction that we'd like to identify and take a part in it that change so it would be a slow entry of that book into the publishing scenario so taking risks sometimes it happens that Tima doesn't have the fun to do this book so one of us one of the partners would decide to underwrite that particular book because it's important that it should come out right now we can't wait for the viability or the marketability of the book but at this point this book should be there and then it will have its life it will grow make its way into a movement along with the movement so that's how we do a solid documentation of the works of the first uh, woman deputy leader of the communist legislative party in the 1952 election the first general elections manikuntala sen all her writings together and the writings of her colleagues we make that into a volume because we want to record and document and see the continuities of these movements movements which are now part of history but once we turn them into books they re-enter and through the fresh life that the book gives to the movement the movement also starts throbbing moving once again so this is taking part in the process of change and you sort of build the narrative and put historical events into contemporary uh, into some kind of contemporary meaning uh, we don't have time to discuss some of the other titles i've enjoyed i mean i i can straight say i really enjoyed reading uh, theme book of naxalite poetry and some of those were really reconstructions of uh, events that had, did not even exist in the text form some of the translation was straight off the walls of the prison yeah. cells and some of those poems were translated and brilliantly translated i must say and you must have noticed that uh, when we do a second edition shomonta comes back on the scene and writes again again because other experiences had gone in and he adds these onto it absolutely so allowing a book to grow again and again and again it's lovely i i have admired your work for quite some years now and absolutely lovely talking to the two thank you thank you Thank you. Thank you.